Welcome back to Out There Living. On this episode of Out There Living, we're going to be installing the iTech World 2000 Watt Pure Sine Wave Inverter. So we're going to install the iTech World 2000 Watt Pure Sine Wave Inverter. If you're not sure what an inverter is, I'll just give you a brief rundown, sort of an overview of what an inver inverter does. So you've got DC power, which is in uh, your car or anything with batteries or toys. Um, things that have batteries generally have DC power. Um, and your, your power lines that run to your house, uh, they're AC power. So DC stands for direct current, one way. AC stands for alternating back and forth. So this device takes DC power from your car batteries or your alternator and converts it into AC power. So when you're out in the car, you can uh, plug your household appliances in. So you need to decide what inverter is going to be right for you. So to do that, the easiest way is to go have a look at some of the appliances that you might be using when you're out and about camping on the road and uh, read their manufacturer's specifications and see what their wattage is. Um, we've gone with 2000 watt inverter because nearly everything we use is between 1000 and 1800 watts such as a coffee machine, hair dryer, toaster, uh, stuff like that. So 2000 watt is going to be more than enough for us. Now the inverter comes with a remote cable which we've already installed. Um, it's hanging down there. We've ran it to the control panel on the other side. I've got some earlier footage, you'll see that. And some wires, some um, heavy duty wires to run to the battery, um, to the terminals of the inverter. So we've already installed them um, just because it was tight in there, but you can see them up the back there. There's a earth and a power supply. And then the power, it needs to run through a circuit breaker or a fuse. We've gone a 250 amp uh, resettable circuit breaker. You read your manufacturer's specs from iTech World and it states a 250. So we've run with the circuit breaker just because uh, when you're getting into something this big, you replace one fuse, it might cost you $10. Um, you know, do that 10 times, there's 100 bucks. Just go and buy one of these straight up. You just reset it and it's all good. We've gone with some uh, 2 BNS or 2 AWG cable um, to run from our in inverter to our circuit breaker. And then from the circuit breaker to the battery is the standard um, cable that comes with the inverter from iTech World. Now, I can't tell you what cable is going to work for you. I've had to go and use calculators and charts and um, worked out that 2 for the distance that we're going is going to be more than enough. Um, your situation is going to be different, your inverter may be different, I can't tell you that. Um, you're just going to have to do a little bit of research, talk to some professionals and, and go from there. You can Google charts and calculators, but I really stress when you're getting into inverters and the power draw that's going to be coming out of your batteries, you want to get your cable size right. So. Um, definitely do some heavy consulting and heavy research and really be confident you know what you're doing there. So having a look at the inverter, uh, it does come with the power and earth cables and the remote, uh, um, the remote switch. Um, you see on this end, it's got a negative and positive terminal and they've just got some little covers on them. Easy mounting points there. Uh, it's got a heap of fins built into the body for cooling. Over here you've got your five 5 volt uh, USB points, your on off switch, uh, three outlets, uh, your, your plug point there for your remote switch, a power light and a fault light there. Uh, so good to be able to see them, them two lights there. Now some people will plug uh, a cable in here and wire it into the back of a power point. Uh, that's sort of getting into electrician territory so I wouldn't recommend doing that, it just adds more cost and time and effort and money um, and some people will run a um, RCD in that line 
um, and from everything that I've researched and I'm, I've been told, an RCD won't trip with an inverter. So uh, do some research on that if you want. Um, if you don't believe me, go look it up. An RCD, your standard house RCD, won't trip um, if your inverter shorts out. So what we're gonna do, we've just gone to the hardware store and we've got a four panel um, power board. It's got its own little trip switch in it there and it's got a 1.8 meter cable. So it's gonna be more than long enough to do what we wanna do. With the four outlets, the biggest thing that you probably need to be mindful of is to not have all of these outlets loaded up with high draw um, items. Like you don't wanna be running a hairdryer, a toaster, your coffee machine, and uh, um, a hair curler all at the same time, because you're gonna push that inverter to its limits. You gotta treat it with a bit of respect and, and a bit of, um, like be a bit user friendly with it and, and try to, you know, get your draw from it, like minimal at one time, you know, like don't just go nuts like you would at home. It is giving you AC power, but it's not your house. So we'll get up there and we'll mount it all and hook it all up and then we'll run through what we've done. So we've already ran the cables that iTech World gave us. Um, they're in the back there, they're connected. Um, and we've ran the, um, the remote switch there. We've already had it pre-fitted just so the video goes a bit more smoothly. Um, and then I'll get it fitted up and then we'll have a look. So it's got the easy fit um, slots in it. So I've just put two in here. The good thing about these is you can just put it on a bit of an angle like that slide them in if you measure it out. That'll sit there until you've got time to grab your drill. And then that makes that nice and easy to mount. So then you want to take your black cap off here. Just a screwing cap. I'm going to connect the negative first and then the positive um, I'll connect, but I'll make sure that the um, that the circuit breaker is open so that it doesn't complete a circuit. And then it's just as simple as flicking the circuit breaker on. I've got my short cable here. I'm gonna connect that to the inverter there. Spring washer and nut. Then I'm gonna nip these up firm. You don't wanna over tighten these things. Just be firm with them. Keep an eye on your gap between your spring washer and your terminal. Once that's taken up, you've probably gone enough. Now, the manual does say to start with your inverter on. Um, certainly don't start with any load on it, so nothing plugged into it or running. Put your uh, plastic caps back on there, just to make sure you don't short out anywhere along the line. Just a bit of protection as you go. Protective caps back on. Now all we have to do here is connect this circuit breaker in there. Um, as you can see, that's closed. We'll push that. Now that's open. We know there's not gonna be any connection until we flick our red lever back over. So what I'm gonna do to make things easier for myself, I'll connect this fix end, this um, solid cable, to the circuit breaker, then I'll screw it in place, and then I'll connect this flexible end. Because I've got a big terminal on this end, what I am going to do is just cut, put a couple extra washers above and below it. This little cover covers here, but um, this one, because it's got an inner tube on it for the stud, it won't actually cover that nut because we've got the extra washers on it. So I'll have to make something up to go over the top of that. So where the circuit breaker is functioning, um, now we'll go under here and see if the, um, the green light comes on. And we haven't got a green light, maybe because 
we've got to plug the control wire in for the remote switch. So we've got the remote switch wired in, hooked in. Uh, we'll plug in our power board. There we go. Um, you can see here, red light is not on yet. We'll flick the switch on under there. So here's the remote switch that I installed earlier. So we just push that and the green LED comes on. So now we're back around this side. You can see on our power board, the little red light is on. And you can also come up to your inverter um, and the green light is on there. And you might even be able to hear the inverter humming away. So what we're gonna do to test this is we've got just a couple um, ordinary items that you may carry with you. Um, some common items here. First, we've got the toaster, the induction cooktop, and the little coffee machine. And all you've got to do to work out the uh, wattage on these things is have a look on the bottom. There's usually a sticker. You can see there, this is 700 watt. So the toaster, the toaster should do it, no worries. And then you come across to the coffee machine here. Uh, it's just a little coffee machine. Um, and you can see there, 1350 watt. And then come across the induction cooktop and we have 2000 watts there. So there is a calculation you can use to work out your run times uh, with your battery bank and the wattage of what you're using. Bear in mind these wattages prescribed on these appliances is going to be the max. So usually um, with say the toaster or the coffee machine, when they first start heating up, when the heating elements um, are getting up to temperature, and then they'll have a lesser temperature when they're, um, when they're just humming away. So uh, we'll start with the toaster and work our way up to the frying pan. Turn that on. And the toaster is down. Let's have a look at this. And it's using 60 amps. And there's the toaster humming away through that power board. All right, so we cancel that. Moving on. So now we've done the toaster, we'll move into the coffee machine, which is 1350 watts. So we'll see how that goes. So we turn this on. Got to wait for the lights to heat up. So what we'll do, come back around to this side and you can see that is pulling 119 amps. Now it's dropped right back down again because it's heated up 5.96 amps. So we should go around here and have a look. There we go. So we'll have a look what that's using when it runs with the pump. So with the pump running, it's using 124 amps. Hundred and twenty amps and it stopped pumping. Now it's going down, back down to 46. Now, if you come around here, the fan and the inverter started running, and you got steaming hot coffee there. So you throw that water out. Now here's the real test. We'll move on to the induction cooktop, which is 2000 watt. So we'll plug that in and have a look. So we've switched on the induction cooktop um, on setting eight. We couldn't get it to run on nine. It just couldn't draw enough power. Um, but if you look there, after about 30 seconds, that water was boiling. And you'll hear the um, inverter up there. The fans are running because it is drawing um, a lot of power from that in inverter, through that inverter. So it's generating a bit of heat. 
So the inverter fan will keep running after you turn it off just until um, the inverter is happy that it's cooled down and um, all the internal parts aren't going to cook themselves. So we did have an issue with the circuit breaker. This is a 250 amp 12 volt circuit breaker but if you look at here it says it's up to 42 volts. So I don't know enough about these but maybe that uh, voltage has something to do with it. Um, different volts and different amp levels on them I don't know but we did go to an auto electrician took a bit of an educated guess and said we thought the problem was with the circuit breaker um, he provided me with another one and we put that in and it worked fine um, we could take the cooktop top up to setting 8 um, and then the inverter couldn't give it any more power so there was just one setting one setting left to go but that got the water boiling in about 30 seconds so I don't think we're going to need to use all that power to be honest um, but long story short this was about 20 bucks off ebay um, the good quality circuit breaker up there was about 110 dollars from an auto electrician so i would suggest that's one thing you don't skimp on um, as i said we could only get about 160 amps out of this at best and it would trip um, and with the um, the higher quality one it was getting well over 200 and, and it still didn't trip we actually just ran out of supply power so if you're um if you're running the inverter and it turns itself off, it's one of the safety features, most likely the over discharge feature. Um, so it's trying to draw too hard from your battery bank um, and, and your appliances are drawing too hard from the inverter and it, the system's not designed to go that high. Um, what you gotta do is unplug whatever's plugged in from the inverter, switch your red switch off, reset your circuit breaker, Go around, flick your switch back on, plug that back in, and then um, turn your inverter on at the remote switch. You just gotta reset the whole system. Thanks for watching. If you have enjoyed, then hit the subscribe button, the notification bell. Uh, get over to Facebook and Instagram, follow us there. Follow us on TikTok. Have a look at our webpage, outthereliving.com.au. Uh, that'll take you to all the links or hit the, uh, the bio in Instagram and that'll take you to our link tree. So if you want to get your hands on one of these inverters or even a solar controller, battery monitor, some lithium batteries, a uh, lithium crank battery or a solar blanket or any other 12 volt gear, head across to itechworld.com.au, have a look and if you buy something, punch in the discount code out there living when you get to the checkout and you'll save 10% store wide. Don't forget, whatever it takes, get out there living. Hooroo!